So we have described the application on hyperparameter tuning as an instance of Bayesian optimization or could be framed as an instance of Bayesian optimization or budgeted expensive black box optimization. Now I will give an additional example on robotic tasks before we go into the application itself or how to apply and use uh, Bayesian optimization. So imagine you have an air hockey problem like the one we faced here. So we had a set of robots like this. So we had two robot arms and then we had a table and there was a puck and then the robot could move and actually hit the uh, puck. And its goal is to score a goal in the opposing uh, uh, robot so that it wins. Now, of course, controlling things on the real world task itself is very complicated and as such what we are going to do is we're going to work in a simulated world in order to learn the behavior we would like to learn and then take that behavior and try to transfer it into the real world simulation or into the real world situation now when it comes to something like this the simulator we are going to use is called gazebo and that simulator is uh, the realistic simulator in robotics. So if you're interested in running things in robotics and you want to do real world robotics beyond simulated environments, then Gazebo is a good way to go. Now, Gazebo has some simulation parameters that you would actually set in order to have your robot behaving in a certain way or your environment to behave in a certain way. So for example, for our simulated world, we had these two robots here and then we have the air hockey table and then there's this red dot which is the puck here there are different simulation parameters that we would like to set and they have to be set very accurately to match the real world so that we could in fact transfer our behavior from the simulated world to the real world so examples of those simulation parameters include like friction parameters or puck behavioral parameters and so forth. Now, our goal is to identify those simulation parameters so that we could take the behavior we actually learned in simulation and get it to the real world. However, it's important to note that setting those parameters is not as simple as one might think for three main reasons. The first reason is that the puck collides with the table and therefore has a discontinuity in its behavior. So at a certain time, it's going in one direction and then suddenly it goes in another direction. So there's a non-differentiability when it comes to the puck's behavior. Another thing, if you just want to formalize this as a simple optimization problem of a certain loss and say, let's differentiate in the simulator parameters, this is also difficult because you need to differentiate through a gazebo simulator, and that's extremely hard to do. So you can't just simply take the derivative of your loss function, which says, let's say, it measures the behavior uh, between your simulated world and the real world, and then do a derivative of that. That can't work because it's very complicated to do this. And one run of gazebo can be extremely slow and therefore we need something that is able to quickly tune those parameters. So to do that, what we did is we collected a real world data set, which we call the real here. And that's just a set of trajectories of how the puck is behaving in the real world, which we tracked using an OptiTrack system. So an OptiTrack system is just a system of cameras that allows you to track the trajectory of the puck on the table. And this will give us the real world data and the real world behavior. Then we defined a loss function, which was kind of the distance between the data which we get from our simulated parameters or simulated parameters for the puck behavior versus the real data. <clears throat> So you have a set of parameters here. And then what we are going to do is we are going to simulate a trajectory. And then from that, we collect the dsim. And as we vary those simulation parameters, we get different 
behavior of those trajectories. And therefore, our goal is to find the optimal set of parameters that reduces this loss. Now, again, keep in mind that this function we are interested in learning might exhibit discontinuities because of the pug behavior. So we couldn't differentiate through it easily. So therefore, it's like a black box. And again, it's very expensive to do simulations in gazebo. Typically, they're very slow. So that's why we need also a data efficient solution. So I don't want to try 1 million different simulation parameters before finding the optimum one. What I want to do is I want to find those simulation parameters as fast as possible. So we're going to have a setting very similar to the hyperparameter setting, where now this mismatch feedback or this loss is going to pass through to an agent, and that agent will make the decision of what the simulation parameters look like. Given that the function itself is not differentiable and that it's expensive to simulate, this is another instance where we could use budgeted black box optimization or Bayesian optimization in order to solve this problem. So that is another instance whereby BO or Bayesian optimization could be very, very useful. In the next session, we're going to describe how Bayesian optimization actually works and start digging into each of its steps.